And now it's time for a Q&A from you, the viewers. And for those of you who have been following me for a long time, you know that I had a bit of an issue with the Ring doorbell uh, early on in its life cycle, along with an agency they hired called FameBit. And on the video where I described that entire debacle, uh, Rich Wilson the other day posted this comment about some additional issues now related to user privacy that have sprung up with the Ring doorbell. Now, before we get into what those issues are, you can check out the entire story that I have on FameBit and Ring uh, located at the link that you see on screen here. Briefly, what happened was FameBit, which is a influencer marketing agency, uh, reached out to me probably about three or four years ago now, uh, asking me to do a review of the Ring doorbell for $250. They wanted to pay me to do a review. And they indicated in the email they wanted the review to be a positive one. I, of course, refused to do that because that's not what I do. I don't do positive reviews for money. Uh, and I also disclose everything that I do so you know what the relationships are between me and companies. And uh, that wasn't something they wanted me to do. Uh, so we just kind of went our separate ways. But I ended up buying a Ring doorbell and reviewing it. And in the course of doing that, I kind of looked back at the time that I was made that offer and found that there were a lot of people who had uploaded Ring doorbell reviews. Uh, most of those reviews were uh, essentially paid advertisements that were completely undisclosed to the viewer, and those videos are probably still up on YouTube to this day. I thought it was a very shady thing for both FameBit and Ring to do. Both companies denied that they were doing this on purpose, and they blamed the other. It was kind of a, kind of a wacky story. Uh, but nonetheless, this was the kind of company that they were uh, and potentially still are. And oddly enough, both Ring and FameBit got acquired by bigger companies. Uh, FameBit was acquired by YouTube and is now an official YouTube influencer marketing thing. Uh, and Ring was acquired by Amazon. Uh, but the article that Rich was pointing us to is this one in The Intercept about how Ring has been treating videos that customer cameras are recording. So when you buy this thing, they talk about how it's encrypted and that nobody can see what your camera's recording, but it looks like uh, Ring was actually taking these videos and putting them into an S3 cloud bucket that was accessible to their developers in the Ukraine. Uh, no passwords, no decryption. They could just click on the video and watch it. And you can read more about this on the Ring uh, article on The Intercept. But to be honest with you, this story did not surprise me, given how shady their initial marketing of the product was. Uh, they didn't hold customers in high enough regard that they uh, thought they could get the product launched without undisclosed paid reviews. And clearly, that uh, lack of respect continues into their own privacy practices. Now, I do think a lot of Ring's success can be attributed to some of the shady marketing they did early on in the product lifecycle, partly because native advertising, in other words, ads that get kind of integrated in with the rest of the content you might be looking at, is very effective. And Boston University uh, just released a study about this phenomena on their website, and you can take a look at it uh, on the link on screen here. They found that fewer than one in 10 people can tell sponsored content from an article, and this is on major media sites, not just uh, social media sites. So they cited the New York Times, for example, which has this uh, feature where they can have advertisers uh, either pay for a specific article or perhaps submit content themselves. It looks a lot like a regular article on the New York Times if you're browsing through their app. Uh, they will have this paid post up here and uh, some branding here for their brand studio. But for the most part, people aren't seeing this and are assuming that this is regular content. And if this is the New York Times, you can imagine uh, the influence that you can have on a social media site like Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. And if you look at this post that Kendall Jenner made right before the disastrous fire festival, uh, you can see just how undisclosed advertising can really deceive people. Uh, so here she posted uh, her very first post about the fire festival to get people to buy tickets. And uh, she was paid $250,000 for what you see on screen here. Uh, this was probably taken very early in its life cycle. She had over seven and a half million views on the video on this particular Instagram post, and it only went up from there. And a lot of people ended up losing money that they never will ever get back. Uh, from this total disaster of a music festival that really uh, hooked into this notion that people can be very easily deceived by uh, paid undisclosed advertisements on these social media platforms. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters. 
including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta. The Four Guys with Quarters podcast. Tom Albrecht. Anuj Zaveri. And Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.